Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Right up, the newly insane America, Oregon allowing 15-year-olds to get state-subsidized sex change operations without notifying their parents. Yes, indeedy, step right up in Oregon. Children are not allowed to drive, smoke, donate blood, or get a tattoo, get a tattoo, or even go to a tanning bed. But because the radical feminists, the clipped-haired, mean-faced brigades, in a first-in-the-nation policy, slipped through a rule that parents are only just finding out about, 15-year-olds are now allowed to have their sex parts cut off if they're a boy, or sex parts put on if they're a girl. And guess what? The citizens of the state of Oregon even pay for it through its Medicaid program, the so-called Oregon Health Plan. If this is not insanity, I'd like to know what is. Tell me what's more insane than this. Tell me why the traditional Muslim world is at war with the United States of America, if it's not things like this. No comments? Here's another one to show you the insane America under Obama. A new MTV show publicly shames white people for, quote, what they've done in America. Can you believe that this country has fallen to that level? MTV will air a show later this month entitled White People, which will show young white Americans crying on camera over their, quote, white privilege and publicly shaming them for what they've done in America. Now, what's even worse than this, white hatred, is that it was produced by a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, Jose Antonio Vargas, who is also an illegal alien. And also an illegal alien. I wonder if this illegal alien will be doing a show called Black Privilege. And while he's at it, I wonder if he'll be doing a, a documentary called Hispanic Privilege in the United States of America, where even murderers, such as the gentleman in San Francisco who shot the woman in front of her father is treated not only with kid gloves, but with a care you could not comprehend. Incidentally, I have on michaelsavage.com a little YouTube piece that you're, you really have to look at. It's the San Francisco supervisors defending the ordinance of asylum, whatever they call it, an asylum city. I know what they call it, idiot. Uh, in wake of the killing of this woman. You take a look at their faces. Take a look at Mr. Campos. Knows how to put on a suit and tie. They learned, they taught him that. Take a look at the others. They, they, they gussy themselves up to look like human beings. Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable to me. And by the way, the sheriff, the lunatic sheriff who had beat up his wife and had it expunged from the records, Sheriff Murakami. He, of course, had asked for the illegal alien murderer, murderer to be brought into San Francisco so he could release him on the streets. Even Feinstein is up in arms over this. Even Feinstein said he shouldn't have done it. How does he keep his office? Why has he not been arrested for this, for complicity in this murder? You know, it's called accidental homicide or whatever. It's, I never saw anything like this out of control city. Never. And also, on the Drudge Report, there was a link to a fraudulent article by doctors working for the pharmaceutical establishment saying that fish oils don't do anything. All of the studies don't support the benefits of fish oils. I sent Matt an article saying, Matt, please, you know that the pharmaceutical industry is in cahoots with places like the Mayo Clinic to debunk any natural product that is not requiring a prescription because it interferes with the... Uh, pharmaceutical industry. We all know what's going on. There's a war against vitamins, a war against any supplement that works better than a prescription drug without a prescription that's 10 times cheaper. Big Pharma is after them. And isn't it ironic that it's the Democrats that are trying to kill uh, such medical freedom? Isn't it interesting that it's we conservatives like Michael Savage who have worked for so many years 
to protect your right to use vitamins while it's the illegitimate left that wants to curb free speech, wants to tell you what to think, what to eat, and is now trying to take away your right to access vitamins so they can turn you into a pharmaceutical addict? Isn't it interesting? So those are, those are topics that are interesting, me to, interesting to me today, and I will be playing some of this tape, including uh, the trailer for the so-called white people, in which children cry for being white as they're beaten up by this illegal alien vermin for being Caucasian. I've never seen such hatred. I have never seen anything like this. If the Ku Klux Klan had done a video attacking black people, it couldn't be more vile than this in attacking white children. It gets worse by the day. And this war against whites, by the way, is not coming out of thin air. It's not coming as a result of spontaneous combustion. Barack Obama and his minions have started the war, continue to inflame the war, and it doesn't stop. It trickles down. There was a book years ago that I wrote called Trickle, actually it was called Trickle Up Poverty. But the fact of the matter is we now have trickle down hatred. But Obama is so good at his game that instead of screaming and yelling where he would be called out on it, he does it with such silk smoothness that you don't even know that Barry from Oahu is doing it. Barry from Oahu is disseminating such hatred that the world doesn't even see it as hatred. Go figure. This is the Savage Nation. If you care to comment on any of these topics or any others, I pity you. It means that you're agitated. And there's a lot more, by the way. The phone number is 855-407-282. 855-407-282. I have not yet talked about the Confederate flag because I'm not from the South. But today I will talk about Lincoln and what the Civil War was about in Lincoln's own words because people are twisting what the Civil War was about, by the way. In Lincoln's own words, it was not about freeing the slaves, incidentally. You don't know that. There was a fabulous article on this, The Civil War That Never Ends by Wesley Pruden in the Washington Times that I've been saving because I thought that in his few words, he said more about this than I've seen written by scholars. He wrote simple words, Lincoln did. He said very clearly that Lincoln insisted from Fort Sumter that his war was fought to prevent states from exercising their right to leave the Union. And he quotes Lincoln. And Lincoln says, my paramount object in this struggle is to save the Union. He told that to Horace Greeley in a letter to the editor of the New York Tribune. And Lincoln went on to say this, and it is not either to save or destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. Lincoln went on to say, what I do about slavery and the colored race, I do because I believe it helps to save the Union. And what I forbear, I forbear because I do not believe it would help to save the Union. That's very clear, very definite. I guess they should disinter Lincoln's body now and take him out of the uh, Lincoln Memorial, wherever he's buried, and throw his body into the Potomac because he's not the saint that they've made him out to be. 855-407-282 is the phone number. There's more to come. The insanity that's trickling down, the trickle-down hatred coming from Obama and his sorority is now becoming so toxic that they're teaching white children to cry over what they've done in America. It's sickening. You've got to stand up and you've got to fight back against these people of hatred who are using their color as a weapon. They're using their color as a weapon to disseminate their filth and their hatred. And I'm going to say that over and over again. When are they going to do a show about black privilege? When are they going to do a show about black crime in America? When are they going to do a show about Hispanic privilege and about illegal alien crime in America? When will MTV do that? Well, I suppose never, because MTV is run by haters, and they're brainwashing the children. How about the Barbary slave trade, under which over one million white Christian Europeans were enslaved in North Africa until the middle of the 18th century? Did you know about that? Did you know anything about that? Are you going to see black people crying on camera? 
for explaining why they took whites into slavery in the Barbary slave trade? Have you seen such videos being shown that to children? The race baiting and racial division which is being driven by Barack Obama and the vermin in the mass media is now destroying the minds of our children. And this hatred has to stop. I'm Michael Savage and I approve of every word that I've used thus far. The phone number is 855-407-282. Let's go to the calls. They are unprotected, meaning I don't know even who you are. I only know the station, so I don't know your topic. So when I call your number, just tell us your name, your station, and your topic. Let's try for line number four. Line four, go ahead, please. Name is Ryan, KSFO. Topic is Kate Steinle. Uh, that's, the, that's the young woman who was killed by the Mexican illegal alien on the wharf the other day, yes? Tell us, what do you want to say? Well... Uh, I've been listening to you for about 15 years now, and I've never never called until today just because this topic means so much to me. Um, I met her in college down in Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. We got into discussions about, you know, politics and stuff, and we didn't see eye to eye on some stuff, but she was just such a great girl. Um, and uh, when, when it's mentioned that some woman got killed, 32-year-old, woman in san francisco that's that's somebody that i knew and it's near and dear to me um and i just don't it should be near and dear to all of us because she could have been any one of our wives or daughters killed by this illegal alien who would not have been on the street had it not been for the sheriff and the board of supervisors are all louts left-wing communists who hate america hate the city hate the law and i am demanding an fbi investigation but it's not going to lead to anything because the hater in chief will never offer the FBI uh, to this city to get to the bottom of this murder. Aren't you shocked to find out that the gun he used was owned by a federal agent? What does that say to you? It means it's a joke. It means it's an automatic cover up. I'm I'm so upset. I'm telling you there's much more to this story than meets the eye. This bum says he found it under a bench. Under, he's sitting on a benchy wanting to shoot sea lions and it goes off by itself. Who fed him that lie? Yes, and her life was taken away from this, from her parents and from her loved ones. It was taken away by this man, irrespective of whether he found the gun or bought the gun. The man killed her. He admitted he killed her. Now he's saying he didn't do it. Now he's not guilty because he got a slimy public defender by the name of Gonzalez, whose slime oozes out of his very mouth. I want you to know that there's other people out here just as pissed as you are. I'd like to see 10,000 people outside the Hall of Justice screaming at Matt Gonzalez, that slimy filth, for telling this vermin to say he didn't do it when we know he did it. He said he did it. He admitted it on camera. Then this Gonzalez, Greenpeace uh, uh, representative of La Raza, tells this vermin to dummy up and say he didn't do it. Who shot her, a sea lion? Exactly. I want you to know that I can't imagine holding my four-year-old daughter after she just got shot by somebody that shouldn't, no question, should not have been here and have to give her mouth to mouth. When I went and put her to bed last night, I just thought to myself and it almost brought tears to my eyes about. Well, that's why I've been screaming about it, because I feel the same way. When she died in her father's arms saying, Daddy, help me, it touched me to my core. And every red-blooded American should be in front of City Hall with pitchforks screaming at these left-wing vermin. No more Sanctuary City! Exactly, sir. And I want to make one more point. I think, personally, I think the Democrats have it exactly the way they want it. They're not going to give amnesty to these illegal aliens because it's a carrot in front of them. As long as they can dangle that carrot of amnesty in front of these illegals, they're going to do it. And, and that's... I mean, I just... I, Look, I, I, hate, I hate to break the news to you. There's only one reason they grant them amnesty. It's because the legitimate taxpaying citizens of San Francisco know what criminals these supervisors are and they won't vote for them. They are elected over and over again by the illegal alien vote, which accounts also for uh, uh, the senators in the state. How do you think they stay in power? Exactly. I've got to run along. But listen, you, you were touched by this. I was touched by it. Tens of millions of people were touched by this illegal alien killing this young woman. And there has to be justice. The justice would consist of the sheriff being indicted for having released him. 
The justice would consist of bringing to justice the supervisors who continue to push uh, a sanctuary city idea when we're all endangered by it. And I thank you for calling. I'm going to send you my novel, Countdown to Mecca. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. There's a civil war going on in the United States of America. In some cases and in some places, it's a shooting war. Just take a look at Baltimore. Take a look at Ferguson. Take a look at the other cities that have been instigated into uh, violence <clears throat> by this most hateful of administrations. And here in San Francisco, where I live, there's a war going on as well. A war against the very truth itself. A war against the very truth itself. And a young lady is dead and buried. She's dead and buried because the sheriff who lied when he said that he doesn't know why the feds dumped this guy into San Francisco. It turns out that the uh, sheriff had asked for the illegal alien murder suspect be brought back to San Francisco from Southern California. He then released him. So you could say he has blood on his hands. Now in a rational city, the citizenry would rise up and demand justice. But this city has been so debased for so long they rise up for the most absurd things, such as sodas. The Board of Supervisors attacks sodas, for example, not illegal aliens. The special interest lobbyists for La Raza and other illegal alien organizations pay no attention to the crime wave that the city is experiencing. Not only this crime, there is a crime wave in the city that is swept under the rug. There are many other things I want to talk about many other things, including the new trailer for white people put out by the vile MTV, attacking white people for white privilege, so-called. And I'm asking when they're going to do an MTV. Well, I want fairness and equity. I want to see a, an MTV special called Black Privilege and Hispanic Privilege. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Well, where do you want me to begin right now at the beginning of this long segment? We have a slow-burning civil war that's been ignited in the nation by Barack Obama and his lynch mob, and it's flaring up across the nation, whether it be in Ferguson, whether it be in Baltimore. Remember Baltimore, which was burned, about a quarter of the city or a large percentage was burned by um, mobs in Baltimore because... <coughs> A black man, I think his name was Freddie Gray, died in, the, in police custody in the back of a police van, a paddy wagon, so to speak, right? And now we have a white woman, 32 years old, gunned down by an illegal alien in cold blood in the middle of the day in front of her father. And instead of apologizing for it, the supervisors who represent La Raza and other illegitimate groups, in my opinion, are doubling down and say we want... A bigger sanctuary city. We're proud of our sanctuary city. This is what makes us a great nation. And now we want them to vote on top of it all. No one's burning a city down here, nor should they, because we're civilized people. Apparently those uh, in Baltimore who have nothing to do all day long because they don't work, that's why they were able to riot and throw rocks at the police. They don't have jobs. They live on welfare. And, of course, they were instigated by... Uh, white communist radicals who bust themselves in or drove over state lines to incite a riot. There is a federal anti-riot statute, by the way, that could be enacted. But you'll notice that at the time, Eric Holder did not enact the anti-riot statute when the white communists came into Baltimore. Did you notice that Eric Holder did not enact the federal anti-riot act uh, when white communists came into Ferguson? Did you notice that? So don't think there are no consequences to uh, policies. There are distinct consequences to policies and here's an example of that and you really have to you owe it to yourself to watch the YouTube of the San Francisco supervisors defending the ordinance of a sanctuary city in the wake of the shooting one of them I don't know his name Campos whatever his name is I don't know where they got him from a reporter I, I was shocked that a reporter said to him 
one thing and he says another. Then the reporter says to him, but he wouldn't have shot this woman had he not been here. And this guy Campos turns his back and runs behind the curtain along the lines of Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, and Barbara Boxer, Barack Obama, all using spokes mouths and double talk, double speak to get away with virtual murder. That's all. It's that simple. Where this ends, nobody knows. We don't know where this ends. The hatred. We don't know where the lynch mobs are going to stop. The lynch mobs being unleashed by Obama with his slow burning hatred for this nation. I mean, how much lower is it going to get than an MTV show publicly shaming white people for, quote, what they've done in America, produced by an illegal immigrant named Jose Antonio Vargas? It's a world that's upside down. You want to comment on any of this? 855-407-282. Jay on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the program, Jay. What's on your mind? Oh, what's my, on my mind is the Civil War and the propagandists who try to spout the opinion that the Civil War was entirely about slavery, which it was not. If it was, we would not have... Wait, wait, hold, Jay, hold on. Aren't you, just, aren't you just repeating what I just said, quoting Lincoln himself? Aren't you repeating that? Uh, I'm not repeating. I wanted to add to it that to say that there were five slaveholding states in the North that attest that it was not about slavery. Additionally, Grant had slaves. United, useless Grant, as I call him, General Grant had slaves. So you're agreeing. With, look, here, the best proof of this statement is President Lincoln's own words, which I think you heard me read, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you're, you're entirely on, on target, yeah. All right, I didn't know where you were coming from. So we're agreeing uh, that slavery was not the primary issue. And in fact, like I said, the five slaveholding states, U.S. Grant, I think Sherman owned slaves, and, and Grant did not release his slaves until December of 1865, which he was a... I understand, and what's the point of talking about this? We all agree there, slavery was... We all agree slavery was an abomination, and we're glad it was eliminated. But I don't want history rewritten by uh, individuals such as these false historians who are changing history to comply with Obama's view of the world. I mean, do you know what they're doing? Do you know that they want to disinter individuals from graves now? Extremely dangerous. And, and additionally, that's not pointed out, is uh, the racist nature of the Northern armies. They had, uh, they had rule. Do you, are you familiar with Order 11, Grant, Grant? initiated order 11 like well, i'm familiar i'm familiar with this james grossman the director of the american historical association argues that since most professors agree that slavery was the primary cause the debate is over this is like saying since quote most scientists agree global warming is caused by man the debate is over do you realize what we're entering in this country this kind of idiocy and bigotry where there's no science, there's no history anymore, that Obama has eliminated history and science, and he says, this is what it is, it's a proclamation, therefore it's true? Do you know how dangerous this is? We have not seen anything like this since the ex-Soviet Union. Exactly. And that's it. That's why we're in danger. They're rewriting language. They're uh, actually, they're bastardizing language itself. Language itself is being bastardized by these liberals. They don't even know what the truth is. Never mind, they're not telling the truth. Most of them are deranged drug addicts who don't know the truth. If you confronted them with the facts, they would not accept it because they don't know what a fact is. All they know is this is the doxy of their religion called liberalism. KSFO San Francisco, John, go ahead, please. You're on the show. What's on your mind? Doctor, thank you so much for everything you do. Hey, um... You know, I had an insight around this tragedy um, flowing from this assassination of this poor young woman. The, uh, the connection of some 200 to 300 sanctuary cities, and I was curious if you had, had uh, thought about uh, the what intelligence analyst I heard a couple of years ago saying that the cartels are involved in over... 285 and essentially own 285 plus of our cities i don't know anything about what that your thoughts? i mean er everybody knows that that illegal aliens are not just coming here to work i mean that's a given fact 
Even the most liberal politician will tell you that contraband is coming across the border, including drugs uh, and human smuggling. We understand that as well. Everybody knows that. That's not a hidden fact. Even the most diehard liberal will tell you that. They know that. It's something like, what, 65-plus percent other than Mexicans crossing the border illegally? I, I don't know if the number is that high, but do you know that the largest number of illegals are not from Mexico? Do you know where they're from? Uh, Say China and you'll be right. Really? No kidding. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. It's China needs to send their people. Oh, yeah, they need to get rid of their poor as well. They can't take care of them, so send them to dumb America. Send them to stupid America that takes the world's poor and all those that no one wants. And don't tell me they're all coming here to work. They're coming here to sit on their behinds and collect welfare and possibly work on the same, at the same time. That's why the nation is bankrupt. Do you know that the fundamentals of our finances are worse than those of Greece? You know that. And my friend, my friend, listen to me. This job gets harder every day because the disease of liberalism spreads like the cancer it is at a, at a metatastic rate. It is spreading at a metatastic rate. When you see that Oregon, which as you know, is probably the craziest state in the union, crazier even than California, has just and secretly voted to permit 15-year-olds without parental permission to uh, have state-subsidized sex change operations. Can you tell me anything is sicker than that when they attack children like that? How does a 15-year-old really know what their sexual orientation is? Don't most 15-year-olds have sexual ambiguity or sexual questions? So why would the devious... Why would the devious ones who run the state do this to the children? Why would they want them to mutilate themselves like this? These are questions for which only God has answers. I don't have the answers. The bigger question is, and I have to go back to morality again, which is why is, well, not morality, I'd say th theology, not morality. I'm not moralizing. I'm asking a theological question. Why would God, if he's a just, just God, permit such a disease to run rampant in America? a disease of progressive liberalism. Why? When it's killing our children, destroying their minds, wrecking their, their sense of self, their sense of nation, their sense of family. Why would God permit this? I've asked this question now for two straight weeks. And that's why I met with, uh, I told you, three rabbis the other night. And I don't know if you heard the show yesterday. I met not with ordinary rabbis, not the Woody Allen type, a bagel and locks, a comedian rabbi, not the type that makes my flesh crawl. You know, the rabbi who's in it for the schmoozing and they're, they're having the good jokes, they having a good time. I'm talking about those who live with God every second of the day. Every breath is God to them. I wanted to ask them what is mysticism, and I did. So yesterday we played two minutes of a two-hour meeting that I had the other night at a secret location. And today, later on in the program, I'm going to play one and a half minutes of the very same meeting that I had with these three men, asking who, where is the Messiah? Because do you know that all of the, well, not all, the monotheistic religions all believe in a Messiah. Of course, the Christians believe that Jesus is the Messiah and he will return. The Jewish people believe a Messiah has not yet arisen, but he will appear. And the Muslims believe in a Messiah who will appear. I think he's the, I don't want to get it wrong. I, it's E-H-D-I, Mehdi, M-E-H-D-I, Mehdi, Mehdi, will appear after the world uh, falls from a world war, which is why the fanatics are stimulating a world war by cutting off heads, and let me repeat, enslaving young girls, treating them as prostitutes, while the feminists so-called say nothing about this enslavement, while Barack Obama says nothing about ongoing slavery in the Middle East by Muslims against non-Muslims, uh, mainly the uh, Yazidi girls and Christian girls. They say nothing about ongoing slavery. Now, this is a very serious problem, and there's a bigger problem which is why is it that Muslim nations such as Jordan and Egypt, begging for our help, are given the cold shoulder by Barack Obama, Barry from Hawaii? Why is Barry from Hawaii not helping Jordan and Egypt in their fight against ISIS? Why? Why is Barry from Hawaii doing this? Moreover, where is the Republican Party in voicing some sense of outrage and opposition? The answer is there is no Republican Party. It is simply a group of lobbyists wrapping themselves in a political flag. You know that 
more so today than you ever knew it. We all knew who Boehner was. We knew he was a stumble bum drunk who was put in there just to do Barry's bidding. We all knew that. After we elected them, do you remember what we did? Do you remember we went to the polls? We tried to do it legitimately last November, and there was a landslide. Did you forget the landslide? Do you remember the landslide? How many Democrats were thrown out of power when the people finally spoke? And how many Republican conservatives were put in when the people spoke? But what happened the next day? Barry from Hawaii got up and smirked at the nation. Barry from Hawaii got up and smirked at everyone and said, yeah, nothing to me. Nothing to me. Wait until 2016 when I flood America with illegal aliens. And you'll see who the power really is. So Barry smirked. And what happened then? What happened then was John the Drunk Boehner and Mitch the Gobbler McConnell turned around and stabbed the voters in the back and sold us down the river. That's what happened. Now, we all know who the Republican Party is and what they are, but it became so clear to even the most diehard Republican who they were the other day when one of these stooges had the nerve to say Donald Trump doesn't represent the values of the Republican Party. Then the other Republican stooge says Donald Trump doesn't rent, represent the Republican brand. That said it all for me. Republican brand? Brand? You mean it's a product that they're selling? The Republican brand? What is the Republican brand? It stands for Republicans who are lobbyists, who stand for nothing but special interests. And they're no different than the Democrat brand that stands for nothing but special interests. In this case, illegal alien interests, uh, extreme progressive interests. The Democrat Party also consists of lobbyists. Well, that's what we went to the polls for last time, didn't we? And what did we get for it? We got nothing but lobbyists who are living for the lobbyists, by the lobbyists, and by the lobbyists, as I said, as Lincoln said. Uh, the country is supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's become a country of the lobbyists, by the lobbyists, and for the lobbyists. So these stooges like the San Francisco supervisors who put on clean suits but are as dirty inside as the soot coming out of a chimney in England in the 1850s represent not the higher values that they purport to represent. No, but they represent the lower values of the lobbyists who buy them and sell them like the cheapest trick on Ellis Street. And you know what I'm going to say now? I'm going to say I'm going to take a well-deserved pause and then come back right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. How can you find joy in a world that is so joyless, a world that is being smashed under the foot of Barry from Hawaii? We read a story like this, Oregon allowing 15-year-olds to get state-subsidized sex change operations. Now, we know that that's not a direct product of Barry from Hawaii. It's a product of the maniacs who fled San Francisco 25 years ago and infested Portland and now have taken over the entire state and they're now saying that children who cannot drive, children who cannot smoke, children who cannot donate blood, children who cannot, who cannot get a tattoo or even go to a tanning bed, they can now go and get their genitals removed and mutilated without their parental uh, knowledge. And the state will pay for it through its Medicaid program. So I read this email just came to me. It says, I'll bet more boys will become girls than vice versa. Eventually, we could become a whole country of girls, and then girls will finally get equal pay. That could be the whole reason behind it. It's a compassionate thing that the maniacs in Oregon are doing, because if they can eliminate males and the nation is all girls in, let's say, 50 years, well, then everything will be perfect, won't it? Because as you well know, women are better than men. Minorities are better than whites, right? Isn't that true? Isn't that the liberal mantra? All minorities are better than whites. All girls are better than men. All nations are superior to America. All cultures, cultures are superior to America. Isn't that true? Isn't that what they're teaching your little girl? The little girl that you raised? To have her brain destroyed by these vermin? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282.
Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, it's hour two of the Savage Nation. The uh, nation is very excited over the murder of the young lady in San Francisco by an illegal alien. They're excited by the lynch mobs that are now disinterring uh, Confederate generals, tearing down the Confederate flag. They are incensed by the degeneracy of the Oregon legislature that has said 15-year-olds can have their genitals mutilated or removed and get state-subsidized sex change operations without parental uh, knowledge. They are agitated by the fact that the vile MTV is now uh, shaming white people in a show called, I don't know, White Privilege or something, and it was produced by an illegal alien named Jose Vargas. They're incensed by the violence being perpetrated in this nation and that is being swept under the rug by the professional class of liars in the media. If you care to join the conversation, I'm sorry to tell you all the lines are sold out. This program, although it emanates from San Fran Psycho, is now heard on over 250 great stations. I know that in San Francisco they like to believe I don't exist, but I've been here for 21 years on the radio, longer than most of the supervisors put together. In fact, if you put them all together, I've been on the radio longer than they've all served, if you add them all together. I know San Francisco better than they do, and I know what the people really think, and I know how they feel about this illegitimate government that is running roughshod over the voters. I know how they feel in America as well, because I, Michael Savage, have probably the most accurate stethoscope of anyone in the media. I know what the heartbeat of America really sounds like. And so I, I would like to invite you to call the program. Unfortunately, you can't because all the lines coming in are swamped, they're sold out. So the best thing to do is just go to the callers. 855-407-282, I don't know what I'm telling you that for because you can't call anyway. Do you have that data for me yet, Robert? I need that email. Okay. Robin on W, I'm sorry, Molly on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Molly, what's on your mind yeah. tonight on the Savage yeah. Nation? Um, I'd like to say that uh, one of the uh, big um, dynamics at work in this whole thing yeah. is the number one Shakespearean theme, which is appearance versus reality. And you make it a point to mention Marshall McLuhan from time to time. Uh, uh, the medium is the yeah. message. I remember it from freshman year of college as the medium is the massage, M-A-S-S-A-G-E. Well, today it's uh, different. It's the medium is the massage. But nevertheless, uh, I would say that <clears throat> your first reference to Shakespeare is interesting, but who do you think he derived it from since we're playing literature for a minute? Uh, he, de he, derived it, he derived it from Plato who said that we don't really see what's going on. We see the shadows on the wall of the cave. Remember that? Well, um... In that uh, I guess you don't, but it was Plato who said that we're all, in Plato's book, Plato's Republic, the great piece of philosophy upon which I originally based this show when I started in San Francisco, that's how I got the name of the Savage Nation, by the way. I, I was so enthralled with Plato's Republic that I decided to call the show The Savage Nation. And, and I quoted that, that book where he said that the citizens do not see what's actually going on. All they see is the shadows on the wall. Wouldn't you say that's true today? I would, um, to a certain extent, but I think that people like the Obamas and the media have joined to uh, make us believe things are happening that really are not happening. And by that I mean they, people like them, make the citizenry doubt. And um, so. All right, look, we're not, Molly, we're not really getting anywhere. I'd rather keep it news oriented. It's not that you're not making sense, you are, but we don't have the time for a lengthy philosophical uh, conversation over a cup of coffee because we're not over a cup of coffee. Radio lives and dies by the millisecond. That's the pressure I'm under. Do you know what radio is all about? The millisecond. People's attention spans are less than that of a goldfish. If you watch goldfish in a fish tank and you see that you tap on the glass or even look at the glass, they flit away. 
That's what radio listeners are like. So it's my job to make certain that you keep looking through the tank at me. I'm Michael Savage. The phone number is 855-407-282. That is the phone number. WABC, Glenn, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey, how you doing, Dr. Savage? Uh, just had some numbers for you here. Uh, according to the Department of Justice, it says that 52.5% of all homicide offenders are black, 45.3% are white, and 22 are other. So do you think that they're overblowing the uh, immigrant murderers and rapists as a uh, political football just to get some attention? I don't know what your, what's your point. I don't quite get it. Well, the point is that they're making it seem like uh, illegal immigrants are out here raping and murdering every second, when in reality... Well, no, no, nobody ever... Well, first, you, you see what you're saying makes no sense unless you put it in the context of the percent of the population of each of the races that you are mentioning. So, in other words, of course the numbers of homicides committed by white males is high because white males are the predominant majority... They are the majority of the population. Do you understand that? The p white people are still the majority of the population in America, despite what the left-wingers would like you to believe? Oh, absolutely, and I agree with you. But it's still a higher percentage of white males committing murders than there is of Hispanics. Or whoa, whoa, whoa. But again, you're, you're, mixing apples, you're, mixing, you're mixing apples with oranges. To get at the correct data that you're looking for, the correct conclusion from the data, you have to do two things. You have to say, okay, what percent of the population are whites? What percent of the whites are committing uh, homicides? What percent of the population are blacks? What percent, are, what percent of the population are illegal aliens? And what percent of them are committing homicides? That's the only way to do this. I don't have that data. I don't think it exists. Illegal immigrants are overrepresented in jails and uh, homicide statistics. Wait, wait, wait. Who is overrepresented in jails? Uh, the illegal immigrants and blacks, Hispanics in general. Uh, well, what do you mean they're over? What do you mean they're overrepresented? You mean they're all innocent? No, not that they're all innocent. That there's too many of them committing crimes. I'm Hispanic myself, and I totally agree that there's too many illegal immigrants coming over the border. I immigrated here with my parents as a child legally, and uh, respectively, my brothers and sisters had to wait five to ten years to legally immigrate to the United Right. States. So you probably you are probably more offended by the illegal aliens than others would be. I'm a little bit offended. Because they're coming here uh, illegally, coming over the border, not waiting in line like everyone else has to. And then on top of that, some of them, not all of them, unlike Trump, only some of them are committing crimes. They're gangsters, rapists, whatever you want to call them. And then that gets painted as a broad brush across the board for all his I, I see what you say. I get it. So what you're saying is because of the crime wave that is being conducted by some, emphasis on some, illegal aliens or non-citizens if you want to put it that way the entire hispanic population is then uh let us say debased by this by this uh impression isn't that what you're saying correct correct i, I got it well you know it's, look you're not you're not alone in this remember this and i i put this in context the other day which is not to sweep it under the rug <clears throat> the same thing happened and the beginning of the 1900s when there was a huge wave of italians and Jews, late you know, 1800s, early 1900s, coming to America, some portions of those groups were gangsters. Murder Incorporated was Jewish. They committed many murders. And some innocent citizens were killed in the crossfire. The Italian Mafia emerged in America in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. And we all know about that crime wave, and all Italians were then brushed by this allegation that all Italians were criminals. You understand that. And it still goes on today, which is why when shows like The Sopranos came along, many Italian-American groups rightly were offended, saying, not every dentist in New Jersey is a gangster. Please stop with these stereotypical shows. So this is what happens, and I think that's what you're saying now, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. And also, one last little point. Um, on the Confederate flag, it's been documented that the person who designed it, I uh, can't grab his name right now, but uh, the person who designed the Confederate flag has been documented to say he was uh, pro-slavery. And I'll leave it at that. I just want to know what your thoughts on that is. His name is William. Well, I, I don't want to step into that. I, I don't want to get into the Confederate flag idea right now. It's not my it's not my thing. I'm not from the South. I have no feelings about it one way or the other. I just think that attacking an entire culture in the United States of America 
at this late stage is not health helpful or healthful for the nation. And I think that the lynch mobs going after uh, the Confederate flag should better attend uh, to the ISIS flag. I think that that's where they ought to direct their attention to those who are actively enacting slavery, killing, murdering, beheading, burning churches. That's where America's attention ought to be, which is not the Confederate flag, but the ISIS flag. And I'll send you a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, because you'll see the danger we're really in. It's that simple. That's the danger we're in. That's it. 855-407-28. I, mean, I have the data in front of me. It's a rather uncomfortable data on this racial breakdown that you may, may not want to hear. You want to read some of it? Ten most startling facts about people of color and criminal justice in the United States. Ooh, that's a bad one. That's a bad one. You don't want to hear the data. I won't read it to you. I know you're going to say it's all racism because that's what you've been brainwashed into believing. But tell that to the victims of crime. Ask them if it's all racism, if they've been raped or held up at gunpoint or had a home invasion. Ask them about that and see if it's all about racism. See if the poor people who were captured after doing the crime uh, were really innocent. That's all. But uh, you don't want to hear the truth. We're, we're, not, we're not interested in the truth. We become South Africa. Under Barry from Hawaii, the country is moving rapidly into South Africa's history, which is a nightmare. Because if you think that there's going to be justice, you're mistaken. There'll be no justice. There'll be nothing but blind justice and lynch mobs. What would you like to talk about? Can we move on to something positive? No, it's impossible. It's imp I've tried to make it a positive show. I wanted to talk about fish oils and uh, the, the, the attack on, on supplements. It's impossible to do anything positive now in America, uh, in the media. Remember I tried it for a few days? It's impossible. I can't do it. You don't want anything positive. Why? Because your, your guts are on fire from what's being done to you by Barry from Hawaii and his minions, his sorority. What more do you need to know? Let's put it in context. You have a band of radical Muslims in ISIS who are flying a black flag that stands for raping, murdering, killing, setting people on fire while they're alive. And this country, instead of unifying in their opposition to these vermin, these subhumans, instead we're arguing over a Confederate flag. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that we have an idiotic president, an idiotic media, and a people divided. And uh, on that note, I'll take a quick break and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. But anyway, here we are. Here we are. I hearken back with my music to a time in America when the chrome was thick and the women were straight. A different time in America that is anathema to the progressive psychotics who are destroying every symbol of decency in this nation. And of course, in the United States of America, we are still a free nation, despite what they think in San Francisco and Oregon. And we are free to think what we want to think and speak what we want to speak. And remember this, the best defense is the truth. Ask any attorney. The best defense for anything you may say is the truth. So I would say arm yourself with the facts and don't be intimidated by the left. They're not as strong as you may think they are. In fact, they usually run away. When you, when you encourage the truth and speak it, they usually scurry away. I saw it this morning on YouTube when a reporter asked this guy Campos, one of the supervisors from San Francisco, about the murder in San Francisco or near Fisherman's Wharf. He said, well, don't you think the sanctuary city had something to do with it? And the guy said, no, I believe in the sanctuary city. He said, the person responsible is the man who did it. And the reporter immediately said to him, but he wouldn't have been here if you didn't have a sanctuary city. And Campos scurried away like the uh, little mouse he really is. When confronted with the truth, they don't have an answer. They hide. They run away behind curtains, you see. So let's move on to something else. We all know sanctuary cities are a sanctuary for more than just hard workers. And look, let, let's be clear. Let's be very clear. Most immigrants that I've seen work very hard. I mean, let's not mince words. I'm not blind. I'm the son of an immigrant, so I look carefully. I see myself. I see my father in them. 
I speak the language to a certain extent. So I understand very well what's going on. I know who makes my food, who serves my food. I know who cuts the lawn. I know who builds the house. I get it. I'm not blind. I understand all of that. But unfortunately, there is some spillover. And the spillover is what we are talking about. And a sanctuary city does not help us protect ourselves from criminals. In fact, it encourages bad people to come here, which is why whatever this guy was from, Texas, they say, came, uh, loved to come back to San Francisco. He knew he wouldn't be deported. We need strong deportation laws for criminals. We need to clean out the prison population. You know, you want to talk about immigration reform? Let's talk about it. Let us start with the obvious. Tell me who would argue with this. You start by saying we need immigration reform. What does that mean? One, put a wall on the border with Mexico, like the Israelis did with the Palestinians. You say, whoa, that's, man, that's racist. Well, actually, the reason the Israelis built it is because their children were being blown up in cafes in Tel Aviv. And despite what the liberal idiots in, in Israel said to them, and despite what the vermin at the EU said to them, they went ahead and they built a wall in Israel. And guess what? I haven't seen a suicide bombing in Israel since. They lock them out. They can't come in. They want to cross into Israel for work. They go through checkpoints. We need a wall, a real solid wall. Number two, look at the statistics. 25 to 30 percent now of all prisoners are illegal aliens. Deport them. I didn't say deport all citizens. I mean, all people who are here from another country illegally. I didn't say that. Get it clear, my friends. Start by deporting the criminals who have committed numerous felonies are in, and are in prison. Send them back to the home country, irrespective of whether the home country will accept them, deposit them there, fly them there and leave them there. It's their problem, not ours. We don't. We need a reverse Mario boat lift. Let's put it to you that way. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Carnation. All right, stop it. Break that record. I find that offensive. What do you mean a white sport coat? How dare you say a white sport coat in the America under Barry from Hawaii? That's an outrage, Robert, playing a song like that. I think that record needs to be broken and all copies disposed of, just as the uh, Confederate flag. And while you're at it, look at other things that need to be looked at. You know, when you think about it, the word whiteout. I mean, that product itself should be buried with the Confederate flag. What do you mean by whiteout? That's not, that's not right. It's not fair to the other races. Snow itself. I mean, really, when you think about it, snow is racist. Why is snow white? Who, who invented snow white? I think that the fairy tale snow white should be burned. I think we need book burnings in America. With titles such as Snow White, I think records such as a white sport coat should be burned along with the Confederate flag. That's what the lynch mobs need. They need a new America, a more inclusive America, certainly more inclusive America. That's what we need in this crazy nation of ours. Instead of uniting in our, in our hatred and horror and our desire to exterminate the ISIS flag, we are divided and we're being conquered from within because of the illegitimate left. You know, I have a new book coming out in October. It's going to be my last nonfiction political book. I've said that before, but I actually haven't said it before. It will be. It'll be bigger than my last one, which was Stop the Coming Civil War. It's be by the same publisher. And the manuscript was just about finished over the last weekend. There's almost no way to, stop, to end the book. It's almost impossible to end the book. However, I will tell you that if you look at what's going on in America today, you can only derive one conclusion, which is that Obama has been conducting a slow civil war against all of the institutions of America from the day he became president. He as much as said so. What do you think by the statement, his statement, I'm going to transform America meant? I asked from day one, what do you mean you're going to transform America? From what into what? What is your model, Mr. Obama? What are you transforming it into? Does he know? What does he want it to look, to look like? South Africa? The child rape capital of the world? What does he want it to look like? Beijing? What does he want it to look like? Which nation is he basing it upon? What model? Norway? Finland? France? Germany? Holland? What, what do you mean he wants to transform it? It wasn't good enough for him? 
This is the nation that made him president. Still wasn't good enough for him. How much more fair could a nation be than they would take an unknown man with no voting record, with no distinction whatsoever in his life, no great intelligence that we know of, no inventions, no business, nothing, and make him president? How much more fair could a nation be? And yet he wants to transform that. He should have gotten on his knees and thanked God that he was made president, given his lack of accomplishments. What, did he cure polio and he didn't know about it? He was chosen because he was a great doctor or scientist and I didn't know about it? What was he chosen for? He was chosen because America has a large white population that has been brainwashed into being guilty. And so they feel, oh, well, we'll try him. And also because we had such a terrible president before him, a deceitful bumbler named Bush, who I roundly criticized. Don't think I'm like one of these uh, generals that go on CNN after they retire and suddenly expose what, what, what ISIS is. Oh, I tell you, they're already collecting the pension. No, I said it while Bush was president. For the last three months of Bush's presidency, I warned you he would destroy something greater than you could imagine. I said he's a fiscal socialist in October of that year. Do you remember? I said, watch out, Bush is a fiscal socialist. He has built a larger federal government uh, to this point than the previous six presidents. And many of you didn't want to hear it because you thought it was, oh, it's a Republican bashing. Well, I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. I'm not a member of the Rush Limbaugh cartel. I'm an independent which is why you never hear of me on any other radio show or on Fox News. They are all arms of the Republican Party, in my estimation. Every last one of them is an arm of the Republican Party. No matter what they may say, oh, they're independents and get rid of Boehner, they're, they're Republicans, all of them. I'm not. I never have been. So you have a true independent in me, which is why the show is so popular and has survived, uh, over these years, and I know that many of you enjoy the program for that reason, but where do we go with it? What good is it? I'll tell you where we're going to go with it right now. We wake up this morning, and we find out that the 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 pornographic channel MTV, which has been push putting out softcore kitty porn ever since it was created, MTV is now coming out with a uh, a, a documentary later this month entitled White Privilege and shaming white people for what, quote, they've done in America. This is beyond comprehension. Virtually every invention that all of us enjoy were invented by European Americans. Do you know that? You could, you could probably name as the inventions that we're all living by that were not invented by uh, European Americans on one hand. And who is hosting this documentary? None other than an America-hating illegal alien, an amnesty activist who worked for the... Uh, uh, the 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 uh, the Ariana Post. They have white children crying on the documentary for the harm they've caused. Can you believe this? There are facts, though, that were pointed out by Paul Joseph Watson on Infowars that need to be uh, discussed in the interest of balance. And he says, "When will Vargas be fronting a show called uh, Black Privilege that blames all black people for black crime?" Or the fact that black people in America commit over half of homicides despite making up only 13% of the population. It's a very unnerving statistic. And he says, how about the fact that despite being outnumbered by whites five to one, blacks commit eight times more crimes against whites than vice versa. It's an embarrassing statistic. He then says, how about the fact that interracial rapes are almost exclusively black on white? That's an embarrassing, embarrassing statistic. Then he says, how about the Barbary slave trade, under which over one million white Christian Europeans were enslaved in North Africa until the middle of the 18th century? He asks, are black people going to be shown crying on camera, having been shamed into taking responsibility for all of this? Of course not, because the soft porn channel MTV will never, ever produce documentaries such as that. This documentary on white privilege is not a documentary. It is something that Lenny Reifenstahl would have produced for Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany. I'm going to play for you now a trailer for this despicable piece of propaganda against whites that will soon be playing on the soft core porn channel MTV. Listen to clip three. So we're doing a film for MTV on what it means to be young and white. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> say the wrong thing, then suddenly you are a racist. I'm trying to be careful here. I don't want to offend people. 
feel like you guys are attacking me now. If I bring up any sort of race issue with my parents, they immediately assume that I'm demonizing them. Give me a hug, give me a hug, give me a hug. How might your life be different if you weren't white? When you say white, what does that mean to you? We've never had to internalize what white people have done in America, but here, you can't escape that. It feels like I'm being discriminated against. You kind of get this feeling that things belong to you. I'm getting uncomfortable, it's, it's uncomfortable. Hey, this is great, let's get all uncomfortable together. So that's the soft core, uh, porn channel, MTV, trying to make white children embarrassed for their race. That's as far as the country has fallen under Barry from Hawaii. Because of the hatred he has unleashed in his quiet little way, along with Holder, the war against the police has been ongoing for years. Uh, the riots that we've seen, the burnings of, in, in um, Baltimore, it's all because of this constant war, this race war that Obama has been, I have to say, inciting. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. That's what I see it as. How else would you, how else would you describe what he's been saying against police, for example? until a city finally went up in flames. And that vile thing, Al Sharpton, they shut him up. They dummied him up and they pushed him away because he was causing too much damage. Even they had enough. The Hillary probably told him to push him out of the scene because it's bad for business. After he did his job like he did at Freddy's Fashion Mart when he egged on a black mob to burn a store down. Yeah, he screamed, get the Jew, in his megaphone. Remember that? Haven't heard that for a while, have you? They gave him a new suit and a, thin, a slim fast diet and suddenly became a commentator on, uh, on uh, MSNBC where he belongs. That's the, the proper roosting place for a man like him. But nevertheless, here we are. I can ask you how you feel about white children being attacked like this. Or I could go to the other side and I'll tell you what I think. I think you've got to fight this hatred with facts and teach your Caucasian child to be proud of what Caucasians have done in America. Let's start with the inventions. Remember how many times I've done this show? Well, over 99% of all of the inventions the world is enjoying were invented by, I know, the dreaded white male. I know that. You don't want to hear that, but it's a truth. Did you know that? You didn't know that, did you? Why, you would think that it was because they oppressed people of color that all the inventions were invented by the dreaded white male, but that's not the fact of reality, is it? So be very careful who you attack. You may wind up living in a jungle you don't want to live in. You may just crash America into a third world hellhole if you keep this up. If you keep flooding America with... I must say to you that most of the illegal aliens that are flooding into America are illiterate in their own language. Did you know that? Did you know that they can speak their language but many of them can't write it? Are you aware of that? No, you don't want to know that either. You say, well, uh, well, so what? So what? Well, that's why your schools are degenerating. So much of the money in schools is going to English as a second language instead of teaching children mathematics that we're now a laughing stock in the world. It all changed when America's floodgates were opened as a result of the drunk Edwin Kennedy's Immigration Reform Act of 1965 when he lied, the drunk did. The drunk from Boston lied when he said, this Immigration Reform Act will not change the demographics of America. Well, that's like saying his father was not a, uh, uh, a, 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 you know what his father was. Well, you know, that's the old American way anyway. That's how America was built on that kind of thing. But then if you look at Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the heroes of the left, do you know what his middle name stands for? Delano. What is, who's Delano? What's the Delano blood in FDR, the great hero of the of the socialists. Delano was his maternal grandfather who made his American fortune by bringing opium on his ships to China. Did you know that? He was a drug runner. Well, it's the old American way. They say the first generation makes its money in the red, and by the third generation, it's as white as can be. That's an old story. But that's neither here nor there. In other words, things are bad, but they're not as bad as they're going to be. And they're not as bad as they once were. And they're going to get worse before they get better. And eventually the American people will rise up and they will stand up and they'll speak out for themselves. So let's talk about white people for a minute. Who freed the slaves? White people. How many white people died freeing slaves? Do you know the number? Start with that statistic for your children. 
If you want that number, you can easily find it. See how many men died in the Civil War. You could say, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you just said the Civil War wasn't fought over slavery. I know, but you liberals say it was. So since you say the Civil War was fought over slavery, uh, why don't you find out how many white men died to free the slaves? That would be step number one. And Jews out there, all you liberal Jews, don't turn red with embarrassment. No, I'm talking to you, Manny. Manny, I'm talking to you, the good liberal Jew in New York who listens to me on WABC, or Moses who calls me all the time. Who is it who kicked open the doors of Auschwitz and freed the Jews who were in the concentration camps? Wasn't it the evil white man, Manny? Well, I know that there were others who did it as well, but the predominant uh, number of people who did it, Manny, were white men, weren't they, Manny? So before you start in with your rhetoric about the evil white man, think very carefully because you don't know what you're liable to create in this nation, Manny. You want me to go down the list? I can do so. I'm just doing it in broad sweeps. And I hope I'm not offending you with the facts. But as I said to you before all of this began, the best defense in a court of law or in the court of public opinion is, is the fa are the facts. And if you can prove me wrong, there's a line open at 855-400-7282. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Welcome back to the Savage Nation, a phone number you don't need. The station is all you need. And uh, I want to welcome WBAP in Dallas for the third hour. They just added it this Monday. Perhaps that's the beginning of something big for WABC and others. It take me only for two hours. I know I shouldn't say it. Look, my glass is 99% full, and I appreciate it. I really do. But uh, there's always room for improvement, and I'm trying to improve the show on a daily basis. So before ending this hour... Since we are talking about race and there's such an attack upon whites, especially white males, I'm going to read you something I wrote in 1998 entitled White Male Inventions, and it goes like this. Trains, planes, cars, rockets, telescopes, tires, telephones, radios, television, electricity, atomic energy, computers, and fax machines. All miracles made possible by the minds and spirits of men with names like Ampere, Bell, Caselli, Edison, Ohm, Faraday, Einstein, Cohen, Teller, Shockley, Hertz, Marconi, Morse, Popov, Ford, Volta, Michelin, Dunlop, Watt, Diesel, Galileo, and other so-called dead white males. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I hate to disappoint my friends on the radical left, but that's the fact. I hate to disappoint my friends in the hate whitey party. But that's a fact. I can't change the facts to make you feel better. I'm sorry if the origins of these inventions in science or technology or medicine and economics largely came from white males. I'm sorry if it makes you uncomfortable. But I'm reading these facts for a reason. And the reason I'm reading these facts to you is because you better be very careful. Because the great majority of booms past and present, scientific, medical, and others, have been brought about by the genius and inventiveness of this despised of genders, the dreaded white male. Be very, very careful because you never know what you, what you might create. Now you may curse me or all white males if you wish, it will change nothing. But if you call me a liar, you'll have to come up with the proof that I'm wrong. Remember I didn't say there were no important contributions by non-Europeans. I said the overwhelming majority were by European males. Oh, I know about the Chinese and gunpowder. And I know about the pyramids and masonry of South America and the zero of the Arabs. But would we have atomic physics and electricity if it hadn't been for the ancient Greek philosophers? I could go on and on. I guess that's not being taught in the white privilege classes today by the vermin who have infested our universities. Have a nice day. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation Hour 3. The uh, topic right now is the penetration of our uh, government by hackers, 21 million exposed in second mass hack of federal government, says the Drudge Report. Uh, yesterday, as you know, the stock exchange was shut down for four hours or so. Many of us believe it was a hack attack, and they're lying about it, saying it was a tech glitch, which none of us believe. Anyone with an IQ above 92 understands that it was not a tech glitch. They don't occur. This was a hack attack. The Pentagon have been, has been hacked. The government is porous, is as porous as Swiss cheese, because instead of worrying about our national security, they are instead inciting riots across America with their obsession on homosexual marriage and race issues. I think that the government's number one job is to protect its citizens, not to incite its citizens against each other. But you cannot tell that to Barry from Hawaii and the sorority surrounding him, because all of them have come up the same way. They've come up on the same false premises. And by the way, while we're talking about false premises, here's the drunk Boehner chiming in on the most important issue of the day, which is the Confederate flag. Oh, yes, he's going to purge the U.S. government of any remnants of the Confederate flag. Now, I'm not here saying that we shouldn't or should purge the Confederate flag from America, but something I will tell you that has occurred to me, which is that instead of worrying about the Confederate flag, we all ought to be worried about the ISIS flag, which is flying over a land area that's quite large in Syria and Iraq right now. And instead of worrying about slavery 150 years ago in America, I think you ought to pay attention to slavery that's ongoing right now in the Middle East being conducted by radical Muslims in ISIS. That's real slavery. It's real-time slavery right now. Little girls eight years old are being kidnapped and raped and sold off as slaves under the black flag of ISIS. And we're sitting here like morons arguing over the Confederate flag. Meanwhile, today ISIS killed four children while blowing up an ancient church. Not one word from Barry of Oahu. Not one word from the radical feminists. Not one word from anybody. No, my friends, we're focused on really important issues such as white privilege, global warming, the Confederate flag. Is it any wonder that the black flag of ISIS is steamrolling across the globe? No, it's no wonder to me. Now let's take some calls. KBET Radio. Mark, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Mark? Hi, I've worked in nuclear physics, and I've worked with some of the most intelligent people on the planet. And we used to sit around and discuss all kinds of delicate subjects like racial IQ. And the fact is, there are differences among the races. And once you understand that, you'll understand why the Orientals or Asians, for example, have no problem in college. And the most... Yeah, no, you, you, don't, you don't have to go any further. But this is a very difficult topic to discuss without having mobs come and want to lynch you. Let me just say this, on this issue of race and IQ, you know, of course, who Watson is, right? The great uh, co-discoverer of uh, the double helix, Watson and Crick. You remember what happened to him when he raised this issue? Oh, God, yes. And also the guy who invented the transistor, Shockley, they did the same Correct. thing to him. Watson was one of our most distinguished citizens of all time. As I say, one of, the, one of my heroes, when I was a young student in the 50s, when I mean, this guy was a god. Can you imagine unraveling the mystery of the of DNA? I think it was RNA. I don't remember. I think it was the double helix and RNA. But nevertheless, he won a Nobel Prize. I looked up to him as a role model. He was then later on in life made the uh, director of the Cold Spring Harbor Clinic, uh, Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory on Long Island. Correct? That's right. Yes. And, and I'm going to tell the audience what happened to him. He, he, he gave a speech somewhere, an innocuous speech in which he said that Ashkenazi Jews are amongst the smartest people on the earth, which is why they're generally hated by most people, because people are jealous of them. Remember that? That's right. And also Nobel Prize winners, disproportionately Jews. 
Right. And, and of course, he then said certain other things about African-Americans. And as a result of that, they stripped him of his directorship of Cold Spring Harbor. And they tried to basically make, make believe he never existed. So this issue of race that's going on today didn't start today. And it's not going to end today. This country is obsessed with the subject. But it doesn't change the facts that not all people are equal. I don't have to say that because everybody knows that. We may be born equal in terms of equal rights, but I believe that we have certain uh, abilities and uh, it's not all spread out equally. It's that simple. When I look at a, a boxing match, for example, I certainly see a disproportionate number of certain members of certain races, don't I? Why is that? Because they're better at boxing. Uh, when I look at those in nuclear physics, I see a disproportionate number of a certain member of certain classes. Why is that? Because they're better at nuclear physics. So how do you explain that? Well, when they get into college, it becomes obvious. I tried to help some uh, people working in my laboratory. They were Vietnamese, and they wanted to be doctors and pharmacists. And I wrote recommendations and tried to get them into the program and I found out that they were discriminated against because they were the wrong minority. Oh, no right. Way. Asians are this. I know Asians are now considered uh, a non-minority uh, by the new by the new jackals in high heels who run the universities. Let me tell you of a story that you'll find. I'm sure something that resonates with you. There is a young lady visiting a friend of mine who has a straight A average from one of the great Ivy League institutions in real in the real sciences. She had only one D. Take a guess which subject she earned a D in. Ethnic studies, I guessed it immediately. So she went to her professor, a black lesbian, and said, why did I get a D in ethnic studies? And the woman said, it's because you have white privilege. This poor young lady now has to take a summer course in ethnic studies, which is none other than brainwashing. You know that, and I know that. Well, it's a non -su it's a non subject, and it's an invented subject. Of course, these fields are filled with second rate IQs because they can't make it in the sciences. Who else would go into those fields? And they write papers for each other, and they reward each other. They give each other peer reviewed uh, 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 triple A's. And, and what is ethnic studies? What does it actually mean? Racial discrimination and affirmative action. Yeah. That's right. It's not really about ethnic studies. It's about attacking white people. That's what, unfortunately, what ethnic studies has become. And what's ironic in me saying this is that I myself am a student of ethnic medicine. I spent many years as a pioneer in the field of nutritional ethnomedicine. So no one has to lecture me on the genius of some of the um, primitive cultures on earth, if you want to call them that, who subsisted on the land and developed extensive uh, pharmacopoeias and medical systems based upon natural remedies. I'm very aware of uh, ethnic uh, values, but this is not what ethnic studies ha ha has become today. It's become a, 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 a hate fest in plain English. If you only knew how deep it runs, it's just incredible. I, I, am, surpri I am surprised that they even permit nuclear physics to exist uh, on the campuses since it's so disproportionately uh, peopled by uh, the wrong race. They've pretty well destroyed it now with uh, global warming. What they did, they came in with a lot of money, and they started buying off our physicists. If they would write, you know, these fake articles, and we kicked those professors out that did that, but it just ruins research in this country. I was working on the superconducting super collider. It got shut down. We would have been preeminent in the world. And now wait, 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 why, why did it get shut down? Because they, they didn't want us having that technology. We would have and we would have discovered the Hadron particle. And CERN, our collider was built and running. It was 62 miles in diameter. And we were told to not only shut it down, but the government put concrete in the tunnel so nobody could ever resurrect it again. Wait a minute, wait and, a minute. When was this done? Under which administration? Uh, uh, it was in the 80s. I almost moved to Waxahachie. I would have been doomed if... And are, are you saying that they wait? Are you saying this was you? This was done under which president, though? Because I know you're talking about several decades ago. Who who would have done that? Why would that president want to have stopped our superconductor? Bush. It wasn't just the president. There's a whole anti-technology uh, something going on to where real science was being shut down, 
Um, well, you do know that Bush okay. Sr. destroyed our few neutron bombs. I'm the only person in the history of the media who actually interviewed Sam Cohen, who developed the neutron bomb. I have that famous tape. We have it. I should play it another day. Sam Cohen developed a neutron bomb. We're the only ones who had it at the time. And by the way, several nations still have neutron bombs. We're not amongst them because Bush Sr. destroyed the last numbers of them that we had. I'm sure you're aware of that, correct? Right. And Edward Teller was, I used to talk to him about global warming, things like that. And he, he told me he was very much a patriot and nationalist. And he told me it was political what they were doing to us. Yes, and I compare it to the I compare it to the Lysenko affair in my studies and my writings because that's what went on when the Soviets took control of science. Uh, we had the Lysenko affair. The very same perversion of science is occurring now under Barack Obama, and that's what you're confirming right now. Well, my my friend, I'm so glad you called me from somewhere in America. All I have to give you is my thanks and my prayers and a copy of my novel Countdown to Mecca, which I'm. Sure, you will find matches your IQ. I'll be right back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Breaking news in the Savage Nation, and it's not good news. Ha hackers have swiped the Social Security numbers and records from 21 and a half million people, as well as fingerprint records and information from their background checks in this massive breach earlier this year of federal employee data from the Office of Personnel Management, admitted only today for the first time. In other words, it didn't happen today. But that's what the government finally admitted. This is a government under Barry Obama obsessed with race and the false lies about global warming. Instead of protecting the American people from ISIS, instead of protecting the American economy from China, he's obsessed with race, 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 and sex, sex, sex. This is what happens when a nation loses its focus. And that's the rest of the story on the Savage Nation. It's a sad uh, day indeed that we have such an incompetent government under this man, Barry, from Honolulu. This is what he let happen. Now, he can blame Bush if he'd like. I'm sure he'll try that, or perhaps even Nixon. But it wasn't Bush or Nixon who permitted this data heist. It was Barry from Hawaii because of his obsession with things other than national security. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Eric on WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, thank you for taking my call, sir. I'm a first-time caller. Um, I'd like to speak with you about immigration, um, specifically illegal immigration. I immigrated from, uh, I immigrated here over 20 years ago. I'm a U.S. citizen now, and um, I'm active-duty military. I've been in the military for over 20 years. So I have a proposal with regard to the uh, illegal immigrants, if, you, uh, if I can propose that. Um, what I'd like to do with the illegal immigrants is divide them into two camps. Those that are criminals should be dealt with as criminals. The other millions of people that are here illegally who migrate from California to Florida picking our, our oranges and apples and, and everything else are just trying to earn a living and try to do good things and, and, and try to help their families. What I propose is this. When I immigrated to this country legally, I came here as a legal resident alien, right? All right, this is too lengthy. This is too lengthy. Give it to us in 20 seconds or less. What's your proposal that's novel? Okay, use the Israeli model. Legal, legalize all those other millions. That does not put them on a path to citizenship. If they want to become a U.S. citizen, they get in line just like I did. But you legalize them. That way, they pay their taxes. If... If a, uh, well, well, what do you mean? Wait, wait. How do you how do you legalize people without making them citizens? What does that mean? No, 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 no. I became I was a legal resident here. I was not a U.S. citizen. You still have to. I see. Okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Well, I think we agree on one portion of your discussion, which is to deport all illegal aliens currently held in prison. That would clean out 25 percent of all prisoners. Take them back to their country of origin, whether it be Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, China, or Africa, or Russia, or Israel for that matter, and leave them there. 
whether the country of origin wants them or not is irrelevant. We need a reverse Mario boat lift. Get rid of our illegal alien prisoners. And that would reduce our, our, uh, uh, our debt enormously for the cost of maintaining them. And it would start the reverse flow going. I think the next thing that any sane country would do would, to be, would be to build a wall. I have to repeat that. I see no problem in building a wall with Mexico. The wall uh, would prevent the illegals from coming over. It would establish a, an orderly process of immigration. And that would be step two. The rest could be figured out, believe me. Any sane nation uh, that wants immigrants usually states, we want immigrants that have a certain education level or a certain financial contribution to make. None others are permitted into the country. Now, the bleeding heart liberal will say, but aren't we a nation of compassion? Doesn't the uh, statement on the Statue of Liberty say, give us your poor, your hungry, and your downtrodden? Well, it does. But that was written before this was a welfare state. And the poor and the hungry and the others who were let in, including my grandfather, came here to work, not to sit on their fire escape, slugging a beer uh, on, a, on a dirty mattress and not work. They worked or they didn't make a living. In fact, they didn't even eat. So, yeah, you could cite all you want, the Statue of Liberty. Give us your poor, your hungry, and your downtrodden or whatever, and your, your, your yearning masses. But again, reiterate to yourself what I just taught you. That inscription was written at a time when America was not a welfare state. There was no welfare. There were no food stamps. There were no benefits for non-productive citizens like that. In fact, most of the charities were private charities. Charities for the blind, charities for the deaf, charities for the crippled. There were church charities. There were Jewish charities. That's how the poor were helped. There was no institutionalized care for deadbeats who are simply coming to America to live off the fat of the land, to enjoy the milk and honey that they did not produce. And it's time for we, those of America who produce the milk and honey, to say no more to these illegal aliens. We're not going to feed you. We're not going to clothe you. We're not going to house you. Go back where you came from. If you're not coming in to give us something, you're not welcome. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Baltimore, which was burned, about a quarter of the city or a large percentage was burned by um, mobs in Baltimore because a black man, I think his name was Freddie Gray, died in, the, in police custody in the back of a police van, a paddy wagon, so to speak, right? And now we have a white woman, 32 years old, gunned down by an illegal alien in cold blood in the middle of the day in front of her father. And instead of apologizing for it, the supervisors who represent La Raza and other illegitimate groups, in my opinion, are doubling down and say we want a bigger sanctuary city. We're proud of our sanctuary city. This is what makes us a great nation. And now we want them to vote on top of it all. No one's burning a city down here, nor should they, because we're civilized people. Apparently those uh, in Baltimore who have nothing to do all day long because they don't work, that's why they were able to riot and throw rocks at the police. They don't have jobs. They live on welfare. And of course they were instigated by uh, white communist radicals who bust themselves in or drove over state lines to incite a riot. There is a federal anti-riot statute, by the way, that could be enacted, but you'll notice that at the time Eric Holder did not enact the anti-riot statute when the white communists came into Baltimore. Did you notice that Eric Holder did not enact the Federal Anti-Riot Act uh, when white communists came into Ferguson? Did you notice that? So don't think there are no consequences to uh, policies. There are distinct consequences to policies. And here's an example of that. And you really have to, you owe it to yourself to watch the YouTube of the San Francisco supervisors defending the ordinance of a sanctuary city in the wake of the shooting. One of them, I don't know his name, Campos, whatever his name is, I don't know where they got him from, a reporter, I, I was shocked that a reporter said to him one thing and he says another. And then the reporter says to him, but he wouldn't have shot this woman had he not been here. And this guy Campos turns his back and runs behind the curtain along the lines of Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, and Barbara Boxer, Barack Obama, all using spokes mouths and double talk, double speak to get away with virtual murder. That's all. It's that simple. Take a look at their faces. Take a look at Mr. Campos knows how to put on a suit and tie. They learned, they taught him that. 
Take a look at the others. They, they, they gussy themselves up to look like human beings. Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable to me. And by the way, the sheriff, the lunatic sheriff who had beat up his wife and had it expunged from the records, Sheriff Murakami, he, of course, had asked for the illegal alien murderer, murderer to be brought into San Francisco so he could release him on the streets. Even Feinstein is up in arms over this. Even Feinstein said he shouldn't have done it. How does he keep his office? Why has he not been arrested for this, for complicity in this murder? You know, it's called accidental homicide or whatever. It's, I never saw anything like this out of control city. Never. I hate to break the news to you. There's only one reason they grant them amnesty. It's because the legitimate taxpaying citizens of San Francisco know what criminals these supervisors are, and they won't vote for them. They are elected over and over again by the illegal alien vote, which accounts also for uh, uh, the senators in the state. How do you think they stay in power? Where this ends, nobody knows. We don't know where this ends. The hatred, we don't know where the lynch mobs are going to stop. The lynch mobs being unleashed by Obama with his slow-burning hatred for this nation. I mean, how much lower is it going to get than an MTV show publicly shaming white people for, quote, what they've done in America, produced by an illegal immigrant named Jose Antonio Vargas? It's a world that's upside down. Here's another one to show you the insane America under Obama. A new MTV show publicly shames white people for, quote, what they've done in America. Can you believe that this country has fallen to that level? MTV will air a show later this month entitled White People, which will show young white Americans crying on camera over their, quote, white privilege and publicly shaming them for what they've done in America. Now, what's even worse than this white hatred is that it was produced by a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Jose Antonio Vargas, who is also an illegal alien and also an illegal alien. I wonder if this illegal alien will be doing a show called Black Privilege. And while he's at it, I wonder if he'll be doing a, a documentary called Hispanic Privilege in the United States of America, where even murderers, such as the gentleman in San Francisco who shot the woman in front of her father, is treated not only with kid gloves, but with a care you could not comprehend. I've never seen such hatred. I have never seen anything like this. If the Ku Klux Klan had done a video attacking black people, it couldn't be more vile than this in attacking white children. It gets worse by the day. And this war against whites, by the way, is not coming out of thin air. It's not coming as a result of spontaneous combustion. Barack Obama and his minions have started the war, continued to inflame the war, and it doesn't stop. It trickles down. There was a book years ago that I wrote called Trickle... Actually, it's called Trickle Up Poverty. But the fact of the matter is we now have trickle-down hatred. But Obama is so good at his game that instead of screaming and yelling where he would be called out on it, he does it with such silk smoothness that you don't even know that Barry from Oahu is doing it. Go figure. I know news is the lifeblood of the talk radio business. I can't take the sewer anymore. I can't swim in the sewer pipe with everyone else. I can't swim in the sewer pipe anymore. You know, I can only do it for so long. And I want to move into some other areas. I really do. We talked about the New York Stock Exchange. It's such a crock. I don't believe a word any of them say. Yeah, United shut itself down. The Stock Exchange shut itself down. It was a, it was a technical glitch. That's what the news is reporting, Fox News. Technical glitch. Tech glitch. Tech glitch. Move along. Oh, now I can eat my souvlaki and walk on the waterfront again. Book some tickets to Disneyland. Yeah, I think I'll take my money out of gold and put it into the New York Stock Exchange because we know that the uh, bankers are so trustworthy. What, what are people doing in the media to begin with? What are they doing? Just stirring up hatred and anger to, to increase ratings? I mean, well, there's a lot of hatred out there and a lot of reason to be angry. I get it. But is that our job to just stir you up and get you pissed off when you're already pissed off to begin with? to point out how these gangsters have taken over every city, how they're ripping off the treasury, robbing us. I mean, yeah, it's out there, but I don't think that's my only job. You know, whether it's the outrage of that woman being shot in San Francisco and the, the cover story being a big lie from top to bottom, it stinks to high heaven. 
an ICE agent's gun was used by an illegal alien, which went off by itself. Nobody, Disney couldn't produce a cartoon that would be believable if that was the script. An eight-year-old wouldn't follow that script. Where are they coming up with this garbage? Yeah, I could do it day in, uh, day in and day. I've done it for 21 years. I want to move into something else. I want to move into another part of my being, your being, his being. We're being, we're all being conned all aboard. Now let's go to the issue, the false issue. We're going to have to swallow this one soon. The communist pope, again, I can't mince words because here I am defending religion and strongly disagreeing with this pope because this pope is not really a religious figure. He is a Marxist political operative in my estimation. He's pushing this whole notion of global warming when even one of the leading Nobel laureates who once advised Obama says that Obama is dead wrong. Listen to clips eight and nine. Global warming is really a hot topic. And what I said then, and which I still believe, is that global warming really has become a new religion because you can't discuss it. So here is a statement by Obama. He gave a recent speech at the college in the United States, and he said, no challenge poses a greater threat to future generation than climate change. That's what he said. That's a ridiculous statement. See, the United States probably kills maybe a few hundred people a day. They probably have killed a million or several million people the last 10 years or so. We've been at war. And the biggest problem Obama faces is climate change. How, how can he say that? Now, that's Nobel laureate Dr. Ivar Givar says Obama's dead wrong, and he gives the statistic, the data, rather, on global warming. Most scientists know it's a big lie, and the scientist I had on last week confirmed the big lie and said that it's all about a power grab and a money grab. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because this, this false prophet, the Pope, will be in America soon. And shockingly, he's going to give a speech before Congress in which he will promote the great big lie and the power grab of this global warming nonsense. So we have bigger issues uh, than we may think. Here's another big issue. In the midst of the gay marriage ruling and the Obamacare ruling, the Supreme Court did something perhaps even more immediate and worse. They said that the housing rule could be used to regulate and diversify neighborhoods, whatever the Housing uh, Act was. HUD now has unveiled regulations to diversify neighborhoods. That is the equivalent of school busing. Do you remember what school busing did to America's schools? That's what Obama now wants to do to white suburbs. It's that clear. Why does an evil man like Obama, and I will call him evil because anyone who goes after the fundamental institutions of America and says that they're bad and wants to transform them, in my book, that's evil. I don't know what else is evil. I don't care whether, he, what does he have to have horns on his head for me to see what he's doing? Every day I wake up to another disastrous attack upon the fundamental institutions that made this nation great. And he guises it under the thing of fairness and racism and gets away with it. So I'm asking you, how does this turn around? If the people themselves don't even see what's going on, maybe 20% of the population knows how evil he really is and the damage he has done. From national security to fiscal policies, wherever you turn, it's an America from which we may never, ever recover. He is changing us into a, a Frankenstein of a nation. You know, people say that his model is Europe. I don't believe that. I don't think he has a model. I think he just has pure, unadulterated hatred for this country. That's how I see it. And he gets away with it because he's the smoothest actor in the history of the presidency. So what do we, the people, do about it? We voted last November. Look what we got, the drunk Boehner and the backstabbing gobbler McConnell. What's next? How do we save the country if we can't vote, or vote bums like him out? Pay attention, my friends, because if you think you're going to get away scot-free, I think you're mistaken. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. 
There's a civil war going on in the United States of America. In some cases and in some places, it's a shooting war. Just take a look at Baltimore. Take a look at Ferguson. Take a look at the other cities that have been instigated into uh, violence by this most hateful of administrations. And here in San Francisco, where I live, there's a war going on as well. A war against the very truth itself. A war against the very truth itself. And a young lady is dead and buried. She's dead and buried because the sheriff who lied when he said that he doesn't know why the feds dumped this guy into San Francisco. It turns out that the uh, sheriff had asked for the illegal alien murder suspect be brought back to San Francisco from Southern California. He then released him. So you could say he has blood on his hands. Now in a rational city, the citizenry would rise up and demand justice. But this city has been so debased for so long, they rise up for the most absurd things, such as sodas. The Board of Supervisors attacks sodas, for example, not illegal aliens. The special interest lobbyists for La Raza and other illegal alien organizations pay no attention to the crime wave that the city is experiencing. My friend, listen to me. This job gets harder every day because the disease of liberalism spreads like the cancer it is at a metatastic rate. It is spreading at a metatastic rate. When you see that Oregon, which as you know, is probably the craziest state in the union, crazier even than California, has just and secretly voted to permit 15 year olds without parental permission to uh, have state subsidized sex change operations. Can you tell me anything is sicker than that? when they attack children like that? How does a 15-year-old really know what their sexual orientation is? Don't most 15-year-olds have sexual ambiguity or sexual questions? So why would the devious ones who run the state do this to the children? Why would they want them to mutilate themselves like this? These are questions for which only God has answers. I don't have the answers. The bigger question is, and I have to go back to morality again, which is why is, well, not morality, I would say th theology, not morality. I'm not moralizing, I'm asking a theological question. Why would God, if he's a just, just God, permit such a disease to run rampant in America? A disease of progressive liberalism. Why? When it's killing our children, destroying their minds, wrecking their, their sense of self, their sense of nation, their sense of family. Why would God permit this? I've asked this question now for two straight weeks, and that's why I met with... I told you three rabbis the other night, and I don't know if you heard the show yesterday. I met not with ordinary rabbis, not the Woody Allen type, a bagel and locks, a comedian rabbi, not the type that makes my flesh crawl. You know, the rabbi who's in it for the schmoozing and they're, they're having the good jokes, the, having a good time. I'm talking about those who live with God every second of the day. Every breath is God to them. I wanted to ask them what is mysticism, and I did because do you know that all of the, well, not all, the monotheistic religions all believe in a messiah. Of course, the Christians believe that Jesus is the Messiah and he will return. The Jewish people believe a Messiah has not yet arisen, but he will appear. And the Muslims believe in a Messiah who will appear. I think he's the, I don't want to get it wrong. I, it's E-H-D-I, Mehdi, M-E-H-D-I, Mehdi, Mehdi, will appear after the world uh, falls from a world war, which is why the fanatics are stimulating a world war by cutting off heads. And let me repeat, enslaving young girls, treating them as prostitutes, while the feminists so-called say nothing about this enslavement, while Barack Obama says nothing about ongoing slavery in the Middle East by Muslims against non-Muslims, mainly the uh, Yazidi girls and Christian girls. They say nothing about ongoing slavery. Now, this is a very serious problem. And there's a bigger problem, which is why is it that Muslim nations such as Jordan and Egypt, begging for our help, are given the cold shoulder by Barack Obama, Barry from Hawaii. Why is Barry from Hawaii not helping Jordan and Egypt in their fight against ISIS? Why? Why is Barry from Hawaii doing this? Moreover, where is the Republican Party in voicing some sense of outrage and opposition? The answer is there is no Republican Party. It is simply a group of lobbyists wrapping themselves in a political flag. Savage.